Uh, thank you all for joining. This is a little session on LTE femtocells. Uh, I'm not Manish Singh, but I'm standing in for him. He's my colleague. And uh, we're going to get going here. So this is what we're going to cover today. A little bit about the femtoforum, for those who are not familiar. We're going to talk about the motivations for femtocells. What are they? Uh, the support for the femtocells and ecosystem, and then the case for the femtocells, particularly LTE femtocells. I'm from Continuous Computing, one of the one of the members of the Femto Forum. I'm part of the Femto Cell ecosystem. We make the protocol software that goes into the Femto Cells. So first of all, what is the Femto Forum? Femto Forum is an industry organization of the Femto Cell ecosystem, spanning everything from the silicon providers to the protocol software to the Femto Cell device and uh, access point manufacturers, gateway manufacturers to the operators themselves. Uh, Founded in 2007, this organization has grown tremendously fast for the last four years or so. You can see here all the various companies participating, 74 providers um, growing extremely quickly. And FemtoCell um, organization and basically business case for Femto has expanded from its original premise of basically in-home, indoor coverage to be much more than that, which I'll talk about just momentarily. So first of all, why femtocells? Uh, as I mentioned, the original premise for femtocells was for coverage, basically a gap filler for wireless networks. So macrocells do a great job of coverage, but in many indoor locations due to the construction material, signal propagation is such that there's attenuation inside buildings and, and homes. So the original premise was to fill those gaps of uh, indoor coverage. Well, lately, however, in the last six months to 12 months, Really, the business case and premise for Femtos has shifted and evolved to be much more about capacity than coverage. So capacity, the idea of being offloading the macro cell network using Femto cell technology or small cell technology more generally. So small cells being Femto, Pico, and micro cells, all basically the same premise of something less than a macro cell, smaller in size, but the same basic intelligence uh, So for Femto cells. So the whole idea is, Traffic is going exponentially fast. Um, traffic is doubling every year on the internet, yet technology is only increasing capacity, uh, like LTE, for example, over 3G, only a four times improvement. So we cannot have a linear solution to an exponential problem. You need an exponential solution to an exponential problem, and that's where femtocells come in. So what are femtocells? Basically, a femtocell is a home base station, or small base station that has the same uh, functionality as a macro cell base station. So the, the type of base station on the side of the road or side of a building uh, providing wireless connectivity, same thing in a femtocell, but it's a much more compact package. So whether it's for 2G, 3G, or now LTE, the whole idea is you have wireless connectivity. Uh, it's part of the managed spectrum of an operator. So this is unlike Wi-Fi, which is unmanaged spectrum, unlicensed spectrum. Uh, which still provides wireless connectivity is just unmanaged. Femto cells, on the other hand, are managed spectrum, licensed spectrum. So the operators offer these devices, the small access point, uh, the first wave of Femto cells are basically standalone devices, little, uh, we can see a number in the, in the cases here, about the size of a Wi-Fi router, a DSL modem, or cable modem. The second, third, fourth generations of Femto cells are likely to be converged devices. Uh, Femto cell technology integrated with a DSL modem, a cable modem, a set-top box, things of that nature. So the idea being that uh, femto cells leverage the broadband connectivity that already exists in a home or enterprise. So whether that be cable modem, DSL, or fiber, if a, a residence or building happens to have that, use that backbone connectivity for the, uh, the transport as opposed to having a macro cell, which is has T1s or fiber to them. So much more cost effective, much faster to deploy, and a very quick ROI. So the great thing about uh, Femto cells and the Femto form in particular has been quite aggressive in working with 3GPP, the standards organizations, to incorporate Femto, Femto cell technology and standards into the LTE spec. So whereas 3G was somewhat of a, a bolt-on, incorporating femtocell technology into 3G networks from, for LTE, it's been built in right from the start in the, uh, in the 3GPP spec. And this enables a much faster deployment of femtocells than, than has been the case in the, in the 3G arena. And again, since the premise of femtocells has evolved from the original, from being a more of a coverage play to now being much more of a capacity play, 
we expect the, the deployment of, of LTE femto cells to be much more rapid than we've seen in the 3G uh, arena. I've covered this uh, to some extent. We, we keep talking about femto cells and femto technology. The, the more technical term, according to the 3GPP, is the the node, the E node B, the home E node B. So E, e node B is just the LTE terminology for uh, the base station. So the home E node B being the home base station or femto cell. Uh, you can generalize all of this and put it in the small cell category, and we're still talking about femto, pico, and micro cells. Same basic premise. So again, they have been included from the beginning, which uh, fac facilitates the interoperability work that is taking place in, in the deployment plans of operators. So the the um, the architecture of femtocells has simplified quite a bit. When femtocells were first being um, discussed and, and developed in the last couple of years, there were many competing architectures, literally over a dozen different architectures for femtocells, how, how they could be deployed. And a variety of different vendors had their own version, and operators had their own opinions based on what uh, infrastructure they already had in place, um, you know, whether it was CDMA providers or UMTS providers. Basically, Femto Forum has done a great job of getting all the players together to converge on a single unified architecture uh, using the, the IUH protocol. So that's been one of the great advancements of this organization, getting all the table stakes players together to, to agree. So let's talk a little bit more about LTE Femto cells and, um, and you know, the, the various aspects here, as you can see on the screen. So first of all, the business case uh, for Femto cells. It's, it's, uh, as I mentioned a couple of times, the premises move from, co from coverage to capacity, and, and there are numerous benefits to the operator, the main one being the offload of macro traffic. So macro uh, cells are large, they're expensive, you know, roughly on the order of magnitude of about $250,000. Takes a long time to deploy, there are siting issues in terms of communities, not every community wants to have these large obtrusive um, cell towers, their health concerns, you know, whether justified or not, there are community concerns about these things. So femtocell, you know, it it's essentially out of sight, out of mind. You can take the traffic that normally would go to those macro cells and offload it to the small cell, and the traffic is backhauled via the cable modem, the DSL, the fiber connectivity that already exists. So you're leveraging infrastructure that's already there and largely unutilized, frankly, um, you know, the residential uh, DSL modem or cable uh, modem capacity is, is utilization is a small fraction of its total capacity. So femto cells are able to, to take advantage of that. Also, much um, faster time to market for an operator. So it does take a long time, on the order of six to nine months, to deploy a macro cell, whereas a femto cell can literally be dropped in you know, same day type of thing. There's a huge cost savings. You know, we're talking about you know, couples orders of magnitude less expensive for a small cell than for macro cells. So for macro cells on the order of a quarter million dollars, uh, femto cells on the order of uh, magnitude you know, two hundred fifty dollars or less. Two hundred fifty dollars, like retail price. Bomb cost is actually sub one hundred dollar type things. The business case in terms of how the operator. Uh, deploys femto cells to the customer is really up to the various operators, and we've seen a large uh, variety of business cases around the world. So, for example, uh, on the one end of the spectrum is SoftBank in Japan. They've been extremely aggressive in using femto cells because they see the benefit of the offloading the macro traffic from the uh, from the macro network. So, they actually are offering femto cells free of charge to their subscribers because they recognize it's not about making money on the box or the femto cell service. It's about retaining customers, the higher quality of service, because let's face it, if you're closer to the cell, you're going to have five bars of coverage, higher quality uh, voice, higher speed data, than if you're you know, working off a macro cell where you might have only two to three bars of coverage and contention with a variety of, of other subscribers using that same bandwidth. Uh, Femtocell, because it is managed spectrum, the operator retains that subscriber and there's a seamless experience for the subscriber. So one could make the argument, well, I have Wi-Fi in my home, I can just change my uh, iPhone or iPad or whatever device to use Wi-Fi for uh, internet or voice connectivity. And you can do that, but it generally requires a, um, a, a 
a, a deliberate action to make that, that handoff. Whereas femtocells, it's, it's, uh, it's a managed spectrum, it's a seamless uh, experience for the subscriber. So just like as you drive down the road and your, your sessions are handed from one macro cell to another, it's the very same thing with femtocells, whether it's for 3G or for LTE. So seamless experience, there's nothing for the subscriber to do or think about, but because the location of the femtocells are known, uh, unlike Wi-Fi, which can be ad hoc, the location is known because of the, the GPS and, and network connectivity um, intelligence. There are a number of things that the operator can do that leverage the location-based awareness. So, for example, there's things uh, that are termed home zone services. So when one enters the home femtozone area, or one could also think of an enterprise zone service. So one enters your building and now you're served by your enterprise femtocell rather than the macro cell. There are certain things that, that operators can offer as, as you know, uh, value-add services. So it could be um, the screen changes so you realize that you're in the femto zone, or, you know, the home zone or the enterprise zone. There could be certain business applications that are incorporated onto the device because of that. Uh, different tariffs operators can offer, you know, for example, um, there's no reason why an operator could not offer a flat rate tariff for home zone services. Uh, there could be PBX capabilities that enterprise could have. You know, in the enterprise femto zone, a, a whole variety of things, and we're just at the very cusp, the very, you know, the tip of the iceberg, so to speak, of what's available for those types of uh, of services. So, it's great for the operator because they not only offload the traffic, but they retain the subscriber, and you're not, uh, you don't have that risk of having the subscriber go to the Wi-Fi provider, and 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 you know, and, and those are minutes of use that you still retain.